Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Smite Pro League. My name is Tom Battinger, joined here by the illustrious Ryan Agro Bailey. Ooh. And we're going to get off to an exciting week number four. I think that's the first time I've ever been called illustrious, and got to say, it was pretty nice. Thank yeah, you. you liked it? Yeah, it was good. Well, good. I hope I set the tone for our Monday. Our Mix and Match Monday should be very fun, very excited, but of course, this is just one Monday out of the 52 that we see every year. So why don't we take a look at the big whole year overview and what we do here at the Smite Pro League. Spring in the books, grats to rivals. Summer, that's what we're doing right now. We'll crown a victor between July 25th and July 29th. And then after that, in August, we'll take a break. And we'll say what up to our all-stars before we jump into competition one more time in the fall split. We're already halfway through the summer split already. It's really flown by, and yep. we're seeing a lot of teams starting to rise up those ranks. And uh, maybe some all-stars you may not have expected at the beginning of the year. I'm looking at Aquarius and, and guys like that in the solo lane. He's got a tough, you know, he's got some tough competition there between guys like Fine OK and like Benji, but I don't know. We'll have to see who ends up that all-star event. Might also see some surprise people at HRX. So all the teams going to make it to the qualifiers. Who makes it to uh, downtown Atlanta between the 16th and 18th is a different story. If you want to make it there, y'all don't got to compete. HighRiseExpo.com, and you can grab tickets for yourself. You're going to see Smite, Paladins, both on PC and console. It's going to be bigger than that, though. All sorts of different esports going on at DreamHack, because that's why we're changing everything. Big deal, baby. It's going to be a lot of fun. Trust me, if you've never been to a DreamHack event before, they're a blast to go to. There's a lot of different people to meet, games to see. Of course, you're there for Smite, but you can see some other stuff, too. Yeah, totally a lot of fun. That's, uh, that's later, though, big picture. Let's take a look at what's going on now in the summertime. We go Monday through Friday with the Smite Pro League all throughout the week, starting at 3. And then earlier in that day, we have some other fun stuff for you. Global Tuesday through Friday. Monday's console action. I was on Europe today. And then, of course, 10 a.m. bright and early, eSports Weekly. That's a spot to go to if you want to get your picks in. You know, you're not exactly sure who to vote for in your season ticket. Throughout the Pro League games all week long, we also talk a little bit about Minor League, about that console league. Uh, it's, a, it's a good time. You should stop by. Yeah, we have a boatload of fun as well. I usually uh, I sit over there, and then I yell to the people that are sitting over here. Yeah, all the time. It's really cool, and we really like it when you do that. I have a lot of fun. Finch does, too, sometimes. Me and Finch get to box it out each other, uh, and uh, I always win. So definitely you do something. not. I always that win. is a lie. I always win. So, you don't. Uh, I always win. So uh, certainly something to pay attention to. Last week's schedule. Here's what we'll take a look at here, reflecting on the teams and how they did throughout the course of the week. Dignitas still on a tear. And then North America also got their uh, taste of returning teams. E United and Catalogic Gaming, the latter of whom have had some issues last week. Not really seeing it. No, got their 2-0 and two sets, basically in that last week, so excited to see what they'll bring this time around. Yeah, you can see because of their success, United, they're locked in, tied at number one and two, four and one for them at Space Station. Splice on the up and up. Certainly a team you want to look for. And then in Europe, Energy, the return to prominence and dominance because of a new support player, question mark. Team Dignitas and Team Rival also seeing some success. I don't know that it's necessarily just the support change for energy, but the, they as a unit have really risen, and, and I'm excited to see what they're going to do later on this week. They've got some big matches ahead. Yeah. What we're looking for as far as Rival is concerned uh, is an interesting look. Mouse Sports should be quite a fight for them. I think Mouse Sports has definitely improved, but zooming on, on today, they'll be playing against Team Dignitas, Space Station versus United. This is a very eventful Monday for sure. It is. These are two primetime matchups, basically. You get to see back-to-back. -back. Hope you've cleared your schedule yeah. on, on a Monday afternoon and evening because th these are going to be two great sets. Monday, bloody Monday, as you two uh, certainly said specifically. So Dignitas versus Rival going to be an interesting one. We talked a little bit about Rival, but Dignitas on the other side, it always it's always interesting because I feel like we don't speak about Dignitas as much as we speak about the other teams. But at the end of the day, I think that's just because things are continuing to be Dignitas. They crush everybody online, and then when it comes to LAN, there are some questions that need to be answered. But at the end of the day, I mean, Dignitas is Dignitas during the split. They, they are, and I don't think that you can ever make the argument that they aren't going to be in contention for, for best team in the world right now. I mean, the, these five guys are just too talented individually yeah. to ever not perform or have the potential to perform at the highest level, and they have so far. 
I think that it's still that trifecta upon the top of, of Europe so far of trifecta energy. Is North America. I know you're going to say that Dignitas and Rival, but it, it, outside of those three, the rest of Europe's still trying to play catch up. It's often because of teams like Dignitas that just sure. don't drop games against teams that are worse than them. You have to earn your victories against Dig, and that's not something that you can even say about the other two teams upon the top of the league. I think that Dignitas is very, very consistent during their online stages. How much of that consistency do you think comes out of the uh, the picks and bans scenario? I think it contributes, but I don't think it's the end-all, be-all. I think that Dignitas is also likely the most um, predictable out of the top three in Europe, and that can work against them at times, but it hasn't. And and I think it's because that you can know what's – like you can stand in the middle of, the, of a train track and say, there's a train coming. But it doesn't mean you get to stop the train. Like, you know it's there, but there's okay. nothing you can do to stop it from killing you. Sure. Like, that's that's Giannis for zero. <laughs> that, like, that is the train in All this right. spot. So you, you can know he's going to pick it. It's just teams haven't figured out a way to stop it yet. So I bring that up because uh, Biggie is a big part of the squad. You mentioned five players. Biggie, of course, being the coach. Hailing from Australia, for what it's worth. So an interesting uh, sort of cross-region coaching situation. I'm with you. For me, Biggie's prowess doesn't necessarily come during the picks and band phase. It's always been uh, Dignitas' ability to reflect and rectify what their problems were later, what the problems were earlier on. This Dignitas team looks strong by themselves when the coach comes in i think that's really what elevates them to that next level allowing them to sort of get that outside view and, and take a look zoomed out it is very important especially with, with guys like that on team dignitas where they they are seasoned veterans yeah. who have been there done that it's difficult to get these guys to to see the other side of the coin at times especially i mean that's in a vacuum then you add in these particular players <laughs> who are known to have those sorts of issues uh it, you need to you need a, a impartial voice they can get in there and try and uh, make everyone understand and be on the same page as one another yeah biggie's been a big part of what makes this dignitas roster so strong in my opinion and earlier this week we got a chance to catch up with him let's talk to biggie and see what he has to say about the upcoming dignitas matches all right welcome i'm joined now by biggie coach of dignitas biggie how are you doing first of all um, doing pretty good, thanks. Good. Well, today you've got a, a big matchup coming forward. You guys have to take on Rival. Now, you guys, obviously, you've been around the bush a little bit. You've had recent performances at the LAN and such, where you've had to face off against Rival multiple times. Tell me, are these your hardest opposition on paper, Rival, or is this just business as usual? Uh, I think, that, like, online, no. I would say probably energy. Like, we haven't beaten energy this year. Yeah. But I, I, th I think like they slipped a bit and probably should have been at the land over Rival, if you watch like their set against each other. Sure. But I mean, like Rival's one of those teams where like they're always going to do better on land, uh, as opposed. But I would say like up there equally, like it's it's probably the toughest week you can get for us, like playing Energy. I mean, Rival and Energy in the same week. Yeah, and tell me about the pressure of that because obviously like you faced Rival in week one, um, and now we get a repeat of the matchup again. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I think week one, I didn't expect us to do it. Uh, like, it was a close set, but I wasn't overly confident just because it was like a short turnaround and we didn't have a lot of preparation time, I guess. A lot of the guys weren't used to such a short turnaround and right. didn't react too well to it, but we managed to win, so I mean, can't complain, I guess. Is there any special picks or anything today against Rival or any certain game plan you're supposed to be coming in? Obviously, I'm not going to leak this, but like, is there anything like special yeah. game plans you've got, got planned about like focus on a certain part of the uh, map or picks and bands? I think like I think we both know the way each other plays. We've played each other enough. Like They play, it depends on the day. Like If their objective play is on point, then that's obviously their strength. But also, like especially lately, their duo lane has been like really good. As opposed to like, in the past, you would always think Deathwalker, I think... You're almost thinking more like Kalas and uh, Vote now, mm. even almost over like Deathwalker. So it's kind of like that makes them a lot scarier, I think, because obviously they're always going to perform around the map. But especially if their dual lanes like firing, then that makes them very tough to play against. And so the plan, I guess, is to make sure Arkill and Shrek yeah, do good things in that dual lane. Then they're going to be getting support from yeah. Juvo. Is kind of the plan. I think. <laughs> I think at LAN we got first blooded like ten games in a row or something. So. <laughs> It yeah. will be maybe have like a bit of a plan to avoid that from happening, especially in the doy lane. And picks wise, we've been trying a few new things because the meta, sh meta shifting like a little bit. And with all like the changes, you know, to sustain and stuff lately, like sure. sustain gods. So uh, it just depends. We still have, you know, I guess 
the old so back to fall back on. It just depends on the way the draft goes, I guess. Good old so back. Well, big last question then. What do you expect from the result today? Do you reckon it's going to be 2-0, 2-1 your way? Or do you reckon Rival to... Obviously, you're not going to say Rival's going to take this, I don't think. But what's your expectation on this set? I think Rival's too good. I think they've slumped a bit lately. But I also think that even though we like our record looks good, we haven't been playing as well as our record would say we are. I think we're very close to losing, obviously, to Maus. Like, a base set could have gone either way. We had bad early games against SK. Obviously, the rival set as well could have gone either way. I think if... I'm confident we can win, but it's, I think we win in a 2-1. I don't think we have a 2-0 rival. They're just too good. Okay, a last question then. What, what do you expect for the rest of the split? Are you expecting to come to the summer line? Is that how confident we are right now on Dignitas? Or do we expect it to be a close race? I think this split, we don't really feel a lot of pressure. I think the first but obviously like we felt a lot of pressure and I felt like we had something to prove because of how we performed at Super Regionals and like it was frustrating because we knew that like if we made it to Worlds we could have we, we were a chance to win it like we just blew it over those like two or three days uh we started so we kind of like proved had a lot to prove that split and then we you know we came close again so we know like it was just a one-off hopefully the way we performed at Super Regionals but I think there's a lot of pressure off us this split we're not too like like it's not the be all and end all if we don't make land. I would say things of like we've taken a maybe the pedal off a bit this split just mm. to try a lot of different things and you know let the boys like I think they're not really a team that likes to grind the game as opposed to a lot of other teams. So just giving them like a bit more space to do their own thing and like approach the game a bit more how they want to rather than me like forcing them to you know play the game sure. a lot and scrim like three two two times a day every day. So. I mean, we're obviously confident we can make it, but I think it's just improvement-wise, like a few things is more important to me. Okay, so just like tighten the screws, basically. Yeah, I, th I think I'm still figuring out like how to get the most out of them uh, at certain stages, like especially during this year where it's like back to back to back. There's not a lot of downtime. Uh, I think maybe a bit after this split, but. The first two splits, especially, there's like a short. If you made land, there's like a really short turnarounds, and that was interesting because I've never seen like that side of my team like having to turn around so quickly, and that kind of taught me like, okay, maybe I can practice a different way or uh, cut down maybe practice a little bit just to get more out of them. Mm. So. Focus little things like that, learning along the way. Yeah. Focus that attention a little bit more. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Biggie. Uh, good luck today, uh, up against Rival, and then later on this week against Energy Two. Thank you. Thank you very much, Biggie. <laughs> I really appreciated that. Why well, you gotta do Biggie like that, man? <laughs> I could not, man. I thought about doing the headset around my neck oh, with the <laughs> with the microphone sticking up. Yeah, that's a look, actually. I don't know. I was kind of digging it for a little bit. I also really like it. O okay. You I'm not doing it. this. Yeah, you did it. You did the thing. Let's let's move on, please. Let's do <laughs> let's do our desk. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. You know what it was? What was it? Worlds a couple of years ago when yeah. I had lost my voice? Yes. I'm getting revenge for all of those memes. That's really under this. I don't think that's how that works at <laughs> I all. I just wanted to make fun of Biggie. What's the big deal? Biggie's a nice man. He, he, he's all right, and he seems to have an all right plan for Team Dignitas. I do like the humility uh, in that he said, look, our 4-1 uh, our win-loss record is uh, a little deceptive. Usually when I say that, I'm talking about a lower end team that has a ton of losses that looks better. Mouse right. is a prime example. Biggie went the other way and went, look, we're four and one, but dog, we almost lost a mouse. That's not a good thing. Now, in retrospect, mouse is better, but Dignitas is supposed to be one or two in the world. So I, I'm with him there. Acknowledging the struggles, nice in and of itself, but you've got to fix those struggles. Four and one. Not much to fix on the outside looking in, and I think that's what Biggie was getting onto. Dignitas is successful in part because they are perfectionists. Yes, uh, they truly are in every sense. They're like they will, uh, you know, you, you will, we'll meet up with them at land, and they'll and they'll stomp their opposition. They'll just win in in 25 minutes, <laughs> and zeros will come out and go, "F man, like I, I missed my ult. Like you know, I just missed it. Like what do you?" And you're like zeros. It didn't even matter in the team fight. Like Qvo triple ulted someone. It didn't matter. He's like, "Yeah, but I missed mine. Like I'm mad about that." <laughs> <laughs> and that's the kind of mindset you need to have if you're going to be the best in the world. It's very true. Um, can I ask you uh, one more time on, on the zeros? Oh, uh, hmm? Okay. 
Uh, but Zeros and the squad certainly looking good. But places to go versus Rival should be very interesting. Rival, the, uh, another stand-up team. Very few issues, although, just like Biggie, I think that there are some issues with Team Rival that can be fixed. I ain't no team perfect out here, and I think Rival are a great example of it. They come out swinging, and they play very well, but uh, they do have some holes in their gameplay. It's they, they have definitely slumped a little bit since spring, haven't they? I mean, yeah. it just... The, some games they just come out a little flat, and I don't know I don't know what the difference is. It's not pick based for me. It's not comp based or anything like that. It's just some games rival looks like the world beaters, and other times they just don't really do a whole lot. And I and I think it's pretty important that they figure out what the difference is because they've got to start turning up. If, if Dignitas and Energy keep on these runs, rival's gonna have a tough time qualifying. It's it's scary because I think that I I don't shy away from being ruthlessly critical and i think that there are teams in the past that we've watched that have struggled because of uh lack of uh, just prioritization right it might yes. not be not might not be numero uno i'm looking at you jermaine right and then other teams also have had that issue e united coming in in the springtime they themselves admitted look yep. we had other things going on I don't ever really think that heart or whatever you want to say, I don't really think that's the rival issue, which is perhaps scarier. Because if you're sitting there going, we're losing because we don't give a damn, well, here's an easy fix. Shut the hell up and play the game. If that's not the case, I mean, what are you going to yeah, fix? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. Sometimes It really is like sometimes when rival loads in the game, they just roll a dice and there's a small chance that they just don't do anything that game. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just have a small chance of failure immediately. You've got a great chance to succeed and do very well, yeah. but there are just games where they come out a little flat, and again, it seems like Dignitas, you, you, they just can't do that. We'll see what happens. Game number one, picks and bans on the way here. Team Dignitas will have the first selection overall. Of course, that means the first ban as well. And as we approach Europe, uh, different metas and for different leagues. I mean, console world just bans Afro and Chunga all out. Same idea with North America PC as well. Yeah. And uh, Dignitas or the Europeans just don't care about Chunga. I mean, so many different things going on. But what you can count on is Dignitas banning the Ra versus Rival. I don't think Wolfie gets his Ra pretty much ever again. Ever again. I wouldn't be surprised to see Dignitas pick Giannis first overall to prevent him from getting that as well. I think that's the right call. I like Rival's ban of Artemis. I think Artemis is one of those, like, needs to be banned right now characters. I really, really feel like she is that good in the Hunter lane. I, I just think that she, it, the inevitability is there with that character. She gets so much safety with her ultimate. She doesn't have any movement abilities, but her ability to turn and burn is better than just about any character in the game. Rivals bands, I think, are uh, it's interesting. I think rivals bands are very. You can translate those bands into your ranked games, believe it or not. Usually, we're talking about a different world. But Cuvo has played so well on the Hebo that it demands that uh, that respect ban Agreed. completely. Agreed. I, I'm not a big fan of rival going for Thoth right away here. I do like the Cirquet, keeping that away from Cuvo Fred. But I think Giannis is the more impactful mid laner in this matchup. I agree. Uh, it, Wolfie's Giannis is so good. I mean, Zero's Thoth is also a nightmare to deal with. And this is kind of the the, the catch-22 of playing against a team like Dignitas. It's like, well, now do we give him Thoth or are we to give him Giannis? <laughs> like, well, what are you going to end up going for here? I think that I now that I think about it a little more, I guess Thoth is the right call because Giannis is not as good at following up off Athena Taunt as Thoth is. Sure. You have at least some sort of, like, this is a little bit better to deal with. But still, it's, you, you're, at this point, you're just counting on Wolfie making plays more so than Zeros. And I think that Wolfie on the Thoth is not as exciting to me as Zeros on the Thoth. Or, for that matter, maybe even Zeros on the Giannis. There's also the other side of that coin, which is, yes, Thoth goes better with Athena's taunt theoretically. But Athena's ultimate and Giannis' ultimate goes together very, very well as well, if you're talking sure. about team fight potential, right? Sure. So, sure, the Athena Thoth might be nicer at picking players, but the Athena Yan is better at the team fight overall. So very, very, very interesting thought process here. Second round of bans coming out. No Terra, no Amaterasu, says Rival. And uh, Dignitas can ban out entire duel lane. No Geb, nor will we see the Shibalanke. I, I like that revenge. call. Rival so far, Thoth, Serket, Kakulin, and Medusa. Interesting. I really do like Medusa. Yeah, it's great CC immunity in response to Athena taunt because yep. if Athena's dash taunting you, she can't, you're locked in that animation, so you can't turn away from that petrify. And so that's a great counter initiation option in response to the Athena taunt. I really like that.
Dignitas draft is is so incredibly well rounded. I'm very very happy. Rom in the late game brings pure damage, virtually no control. So you don't have to go a pure. You don't have to go a, a jungler with a tremendous amount of damage. You can go the Hun Bats, which the damage might come or go depending on the game but fear no evil is there no matter what so you're getting a ton of control from fear no evil a ton of control from athena as well and then a little bit of a uh, little bit of Giannis and rom damage coupled with achilles execute love 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 this dignitas draft mid to late game if you ask me rival on the other hand mid to late game as well i suppose with the thoth i guess but then you've got what hercules support now yeah or, um I don't know. I, I don't like it. I don't like the Hercules support or the Cacullan support, for that matter. I don't think that either one particularly excites me here. I think the Natas got away with the far better draft. I'm actually a big fan of Hercules support. I, I like it a lot, but uh, I just think the tear that Hunbat's jungle has been on for, for Dignitas is yeah. a little too much. Sounds like you're leaning towards Dig. I am. I think the draft certainly puts this first game in their light. Let's see about it. Let's get right to the action. Game number one. Thank you, Tom and Agro. Finch and Tola here as they move into game one. And an interesting draft there with the double warrior. Could be maybe Sir Cat support, right? Very well, yeah. could be. Rival have been known yeah. to experiment and be very creative in their drafts, very creative with how they open up the laning phases, yes. itemizations all across the board. They're always theory crafting with Alpha Jackal behind the scenes. So week four, this is the second half of the split. And with Dignitas winning week number one against uh, these in this matchup, I think that Rival are trying to throw a curveball. They absolutely we need to be able to pick up this win now it just goes to show how impressive rival are when they can go three two and we can say they're on the downswing but they kind of are to a certain yeah. extent you know uh, they've been so dominant for so long that we're just kind of using them winning everything but you can't quite win everything but you got to win most of them and now the time for rival to make that adjustment and digging toss always performing very well online yes showing up <laughs> to most lands not unfortunately during the super regionals land but in that spring uh summer's masters land or masters land rather they were you know up there they were in the winner bracket finals, and they just barely lost to Rival because of the whole mentality thing when they tried to all in that one Titan. So I think that they're playing very solid as we approach the summer second half split. Well, who do you think will win in this game? You on the side of Dignitas or are you with Team Rival? Go ahead and vote for us in the Mixer poll and let us know what you're thinking as we're just about ready to start moving here into the action. But totally, I mean, you talked about it. Sometimes Dignitas, they can kind of, it feels like, get off mentally, right? Doesn't it seem that way when, when Super Regionals, they suddenly collapsed to rival and they couldn't find a way back out at at the Spring Masters lane. You know, they're way up ahead. They've got the big game advantage, too, and then they end up not being able to come back in that set, too. Hopefully, Team Dintas can show us they can keep winning even when they meet a little bit of adversity. Well, they're still playing their game. They're playing the Hun Bats for Kivo Fred, a staple pick for this European jungler that can be easily claimed to be the best jungler in the world, let alone his own respective region. Whereas Rival, you know, despite winning that Spring Masters land, I'm not sure if they're second-guessing themselves or they want to try something very spicy because Callus on the Hercules is not really his identity that he's known for. Well, you saw a little bit of what makes Hercules or Warriors in support roles kind of work just now as they have a ton of damage early and definitely sets up some kill, kill potential. Now, he has gone with the Guardian's Blessing here on the Hercules. I was curious to see how he'd start that so he can make sure he's still getting that extra gold. But already they've lost the pressure, and Trick Tank and Arkle are invading the purple. And I don't like this start actually by Callus. The fact that he did go for the Guardian's Blessing. If you're playing Hercules in the duo lane, you're trying to you know proc that passive a little bit. As you're getting hit, you're increasing your physical power tremendously. Actually, where it's five base and then one per level. So you know a cap of three stacks. So 18 physical power at level one additional boost for Hercules is not a bad deal. So. Add a Warrior's Blessing to that mix. Get more sustain going. Get extra resiliency to be able to absorb the entire minion wave. Well, already, Arkle and Trix Tank have felt very little pressure from this. They've been able to grab their own purple buff, the enemy purple buff, and miss none of the wave as QFR has to come back and grab these back harpies, even splitting out a little bit with Trix, it looks like. And letting Arkle grab a minion or two by himself. And the thing is, the reason why Dignitas duo lane is not feeling pressured, it's because it's Rom. Rom level one with five Astral Arrows. Very difficult to stop him from clearing the whole entire wave. Kalos doing a good job forcing the beads from Arkle. And this is where Rival can have kill potential off of the next pull. 
And that's the th the thing with this with this Hercules. Even if he gets pressured out the whole time, he really only needs like one push pull to kind of turn it around on these early game characters. Either one, Trixink or Arkle, honestly, they're both relatively squishy this early on. So even if they've been losing pressure the whole time, they could turn around real easy. Definitely could. It's in the solo lane. It's Kakolin versus the Achilles matchup. Not really much to talk about in this one. It's Achilles will normally win the exchanges in the beginning, and it's all about avoiding the transformation from Kakolin. As long as you do that, Achilles should always win. Gonna grab these oracles on the side of Team Rival. So at least some part of this jungle on the side is gonna be going in their favor and not towards Dignitas. Meanwhile, Cubo, Fred, and Zero saw them turn their attention elsewhere. He isn't coming and grab his own back harpies. That's why we're able to see Team Rival come in and grab that neutral camp without any trouble. Well, getting the left side neutral mid harpy. It's gonna be a rival, but on the right side, Team Dignitas, so one for one there. The only difference between the start, honestly, is how fast Cubo Fred is as opposed to Ice Ice Baby and getting his own speed buff can make his presence felt on the right side of the map first. No blink, though, for either jungler. Really afraid of the opposition CC chain. You got the Fear No Evil from Cubo Fred. Very scary, you know, death, Cobra's Kiss, and then the last breath from Ice Ice Baby. That's another factor to worry about. And I really like this, uh, to go back over to the dual lane here, Tolly. Trick Tank and Arkle kind of pulled the minion wave as far as they could to the side. They left at the tower line until their minion wave got it, so they can try and stack it up close to their tower line and force them out of position. It looks like it may have worked as Collis is now here, but they do you have Ice Ice Baby in tow. Hit him, it looked like, with the cripple shot, so Ice Ice can't go in with the death bane. Sprint now comes out. Shell used to keep Ice Ice alive as well. That gank unsuccessful. Zeroes with a good rotation. Very great use of the ultimate through space and time being used. And you can't keep up with the rotation from Iannis. They talked about it on the desk, how Thoth is lackluster to Iannis in terms of rotational power, but very fearful of the Athena Thoth combination follow up damage. It made sense as to why Wolfie wanted to snatch that away early in the draft. And he has a lot of burst potential in his own right. You don't necessarily have the Athena dash taunt, which is, you know, very straightforward. But if Kalos hits one good pull push, Wolfie will have a field day with that target. But that is kind of the thing, isn't it? It's just not quite as easy for a warrior as it is for a guardian. I mean, you're not going to miss an Athena taunt, but I mean, you might not get the pull. Then, you know, it might get interrupted. There's a ton of question marks there on that control. So that's kind of the question for Rival. If they if they in a situation where they're relying on good setup for Wolfie, they might not be able to get it done as there's trouble now for Variety and Solo. Needs to hit one basic attack onto Variety. There you go. Cobra's Kiss going to ensure another basic attack. First blood for Ice Ice Baby. And Ice Ice Baby, that's a great way to get the game started off. Slow down Variety on this Achilles pick. Be able to help Deathwalker get even further ahead in this solo lane because what is it that always seems to go right for Rival? when they're winning. Well, Deathwalker's having a good game and already getting him out in front of Variety. That's going to help them move towards that win condition right away. As long as Deathwalker can start making use of this first blood from Ice Size Baby, you know, get some of these rotations happening beforehand. That ultimate from Deathwalker, the knockup, is the CC to allow any sort of follow-up. We were talking about the Hercules pull push that's harder to set up for Wolfie than a dash taunt. Well, Deathwalker can make it really easy if he picks up the blink at level 12 Blinks into the back line, looks for the multi knockup. That's going to have to be the play here from Deathwalker. Find those blink knockups now. Taking a look over at Team Dignitas, they certainly seem to be respecting it early with the multiple feeds on just about everybody. Doing what they can to try and make sure that whatever control comes out isn't as strong as it can be. And when they kind of have limited control, I know it seems counterintuitive, but it makes, I feel like, Magi's cloaks and those types of items stronger because the one or two times they happen, you're entirely mitigating them. I know against, you know, comps with a lot of control, you want them too, but I think it's a comp like this where they so rely on their one or two they do get off, there could be some value there. It's very true. Deathwalker with a one level advantage, but that's not stopping Variety from being this really big isn't. lane of bully Deathwalker, just trading out shots at this point in the laning phase. He does have one extra health potion, both of them with two stacks of the health chalice and that's what you really are looking for in these little exchanges it's like okay i have a health potion i invested this 50 gold might as well use it here and maybe look for another play where i get my opposition low enough for the jungler to clean up call us though still a little bit behind tricks tank at least experience wise well, the dual lane of team dicta still having a good time up against the hercules and the and the medusa it's a little bit perhaps surprising. Once Vogue gets to a certain point here on this Medusa pick, she can be kind of tough in lane with that acid spray, but seems like Arco's having a great time. Yeah, that's true. This Medusa is kind of just waiting for any sort of overstep from Arco where 
Callus is kind of sitting in this lane. Whereas on the opposite side, here comes Cuba Fred ganking with the Defender of Olympus on top. Not wanting to die, that's here too, though. Wow, that salmon leap so important from Deathwalker to be able to get away from Frito. You only get hit by the tail end. They are going to come in and strip away the actual camp, but everyone is going to survive on the side team rival. Deathwalker and Ice Ice Baby were both in trouble, but no one had to use any relics. They're out of there. And with how aggressive Deathwalker was around Variety's Tier 1 tower, I'm surprised that that global presence play didn't happen sooner. The fact that it happened at the blue buff is still a positive thing for Dignitas. But I think that they could have gotten a little bit more bang out of their buck with this global presence. You're picking Athena for a reason. You're sitting her in the mid lane to ensure that Zeros is going to be comfortable and not get spooked by Callus coming from either which way. But the side lane pressure from Athena needs to be a little bit quicker if you're looking for those kills. Trix is going to find something to do at this time, though, because he's not splitting the wave the way that Callus is totally. And... and if, as long as he's fine at farm elsewhere and staying relevant still, it's no big deal because Arkel will be getting ahead of vote. But if he's not finding ways to still get farm or if he's just stripping it from elsewhere on the map, like putting Cubo or Zeros a little bit behind, they could get punished. As Taunt does land onto Ice Ice, but Wolfie's right there with the evade and punish. A lot of damage from that hieroglyphic assault. you got to respect the level 9 Thoth that has that ability maxed out. And I like the fact that Dignitas are leaving Arkel. Left alone to farm. Trixank gonna dash in there after seeing the excavate. It seems a rival after losing their own blue. Why not get something in response with the purple? Well, Ice Ice is over here as well. They really were hoping. I think that Dig are gonna step in there and try and defend that purple buff, but rightfully so. Trix and Arkel just fall back and let that one go. I mean, look at the ward vision on this side of the map. Rival have it lit up. They are looking to play aggressive. And after invading the purple buff, it was five seconds, maybe 10 tops, where Kibo Fred and Trixang's ultimate just came up. Rival had those cooldowns to the T. Great small little play out of the black and purple. Recognize they had an opportunity there to try and capitalize, and they do by way of stealing the buff. But aside from that, totally, it's still been like a, a relatively calm game, I would say, from these two teams for nine minutes in. And the stakes are high. I mean, these are two are the, the teams that are just at Spring Masters, considered up at the top of EU. Right now, Energy very much trying to, trying to take that title as one of those top two teams, and Rival trying to get back up there amongst them. So this could be the game that can get them right back in it. They cannot afford to lose here. And Rival were always one of these teams that had a great land performance and not the greatest land showing back in Season 4 specifically when it was more than just two teams per land qualifying per region. It was Rival, the Energy, Dignitas, Obey Alliance with Rival just narrowly squeezing in that top four position. But you can't get away with that lackluster performance in Season 5 when there's only six teams per league only inviting two out per land. So this three and two star might be good for some, but it's not good for Rival if they want to make its Masters. That's right, it's just a little bit higher, a little bit more that's been required from them. And to sort of give them their credit, they've kind of improved their online play here, at least in spring. They looked great, finishing very, very uh, finishing second place and, and looking good doing it. This time, we're gonna have to see if they can recoup here in the second half and keep that momentum going as they've dropped a couple games already. And it's certainly no easy task up against Dignitas to be able to find that victory. Definitely true. During the spring split against uh, both Energy and Dignitas, there was a little triangular formation where Arrival <laughs> were beating Energy, Energy were beating Dignitas, and Dignitas were beating Rival. This time around, Rival already losing that advantage over Energy when they lost to them, and then also losing to Dignitas in week number one. If they want to get back any sort of footing and momentum, in the second half of this split, they need to find these victories against Dignitas today. Yeah, the one big decider last split was who dropped the game to Obey. And yep. that was Energy that, that dropped the set. So everything else amongst them was pretty much even. They'd just been trading with each other and no one else. And Energy were the ones that let that slip. And they seem to have made some adjustments here. That's why these two teams are being cautious here in this set. And they're waiting to try and find their opening because they understand how important these set victories are now. As Kibo Fred does make a rotation over this side of the map. Deathwalker looks like he wants the fight, and it is going to be a Fear No Evil coming out, and the Defender of Olympus. This should be a kill on a Deathwalker who avoids the execute, but Cubo Fred chases him down. Nice, nice, baby. Just a little too slow to the punch, and that's the advantage of the global pressure. Cubo Fred making sure that he was there for the Fear No Evil, keeping Deathwalker going a little bit more south, a little bit further away from his Tier 1 tower, so it's going to be at least a response. It took a little while for Dignitas to get on the board, but with plays like that, it should be another quick ascension. And that's the the pick that they're very much capable of doing, right? With the with the Athena, with the Giannis. And this time, it's really just the Athena, the Q, uh, the Unbots, and, and Variety on the Achilles. 
So I, I am a little bit surprised. They haven't really seen them go all in for that more often so far, but they found their opportunity and they grabbed it. QFR with a great rotation to make that happen. They're not doing it very often, but when they do decide to press on to the right side of the map, it's calculated. The first time, they didn't find a kill, but they invaded the blue buff successfully. They forced Ice Ice Baby and Deathwalker back to their bases, making them lose some more farm. Finally, they did make a play off of it that resulted in a kill, and these teams are still kind of figuring each other out, not wanting to make too many mistakes. And talking about the dual lane for a second with Arkill, you know, he rushed his Devil Gloves. That's why he's so far ahead of the stack department as to vote about 30 stacks ahead almost. That's a lot to be ahead. Isn't it finish those Devourers Gauntlets without too much trouble? Looks like there's even some variation in the boots path from these two as well. So not a lot of uniformity here in the ideas of, of what is exactly the best way to build or for which character. There's definitely still plenty of room, you know, to see varieties in these builds. Obviously from Vote, he's not going to be nearly as attack speed based as Arkle, and he's going to rely on that power a lot. He has pretty hard hitting abilities, but still like to be able to see some of that variety. And the difference between the 28 to 30 stack department from these Devil Gloves is about, you're looking at five waves. So that's two and a half minutes time worth of waves. And that could be a window where Dignitas realized that, okay, the 1v1 should favor Arkel. He's going to have the maxed out pick me up and look for that play. But keep in mind with the Medusa changes to the Viper shot, once you max that out, you're now getting that fourth stack. So that could kind of swing it into Vote's favor if, as long as he's very accurate. It's a little bit of love there for Medusa. See if she can trade a little bit easier out with someone like Arkel, who's got such a strong steroid. You already talked about that pick me up a little bit on the ROM. So it can make it a little bit easy. Sometimes Medusa can get a bit out outshined. That hurt. Steroid is strong in its own right. It's just limited to those four shots, but they are very potent. So she certainly has the opportunity to box back out with Arco if they want to keep looking for the fights. But so far, it's been very peaceful amongst our two duo laners, the, the Arkel and, and, and Vote. They've, they've really not been looking for the man fights. They're afraid of losing that matchup, and whoever loses that matchup is going to give open the door to the Gold Fury. And 14 minutes in, giving up the Gold Fury, it increases in value. So not wanting to take that risk, because either team... This is where the burst damage from the mages is really going to start to show, as Zero's trying to finish off what appears to be a Soul Gem, already having cooldown reduction with the Chronos Pendant. Same thing, an option for Wolfie on the top. Looks like the difference there is that without that Mage's Blessing, he's got the Soul Gem finished a little bit sooner. But, I mean, you highlighted one of my things, one of my favorite things about Season 5, which is that when we see these slower-paced games, what ends up happening is the stakes really get raised for when the fight finally does happen. Usually, whoever wins the fight they finally have gets a tremendous lead as Trick's Tank forces the beads away from Ice Ice Baby. They usually are able to go grab gold or fire and start pushing towers and... That looks like it'll be the same case here as they've been very patient so far. It was actually the Mad Guys Cloak very Cloak. early purchased immediately after the Boots Yoden's Wrath combination. Ice Ice Baby not in range for the top, but it's all on Callus. They're all inning onto the Hercules and Zeros brings him down. Continue to aggress here as Variety. He has Arkle up in the sky, raining in the shots. They even have portals, so Variety can continue to aggress. The whole squad comes through, but they can't find anybody else. Variety and Trickstank, though, not done yet. Petrify does find the stun onto Variety. He gets knocked up and takes a good deal of damage, finds the stun as he tries to escape. Meanwhile, Ice Ice is going to try and loop in on the backside. He's forced into the Fatal Strike, but the Evade and Punish lands. Oh, Can't find the damage from range. I don't think the range on the third Hieroglyphic Assault was just there. Going to force Variety back to base, and despite losing Callus, he's a low enough level that the respawn timer is short enough. Despite Rival losing that fight one for nothing, they're getting a Tier 1 mid tower almost until the teleport from Variety stops them in their tracks. Right back into to the fray yet again variety comes back in to cause problems for team rival this time it's death walker that he sends running for the hills and all the while arkel very happy to come start start up this gold fury it's down to about half hp and it doesn't appear they recognize yet vote is still in the wave we haven't seen wolfie make a rotation either this should be a gold fury for ding dignitas and final judgment just came off cooldown about five seconds ago rival needed to have their spidey senses tingling they didn't see that arkel was in the duel lane as vote was clearing it out and if you never see the enemy hunter around you know 14 minutes or later in the game they have enough DPS to solo the Gold Fury, let alone their support tanking it up for them. Yeah, especially once they have that Devourer's Gloves fully stacked, as Arco does. He rushed them early. 
and some of the extra attack speed. He's certainly ready to start shredding it. Even goes back and gets the Poison Star. A big win now for Team Dignitas. They start to open the door on this lead to about 2,000. Now, I was just talking about how when it's slow, usually the first fight really breaks open the door. This wasn't a huge big fight. They got like one kill in the Gold Fury, so Rival very much still relevant and still in this. They definitely have a lot of late game potential. One pull push from Callus and then the door just gets blasted wide open as Rival can easily win that team fight. But funnily enough, the way Callus died in that last ex exchange was very quickly. He didn't use his Excavate to get CC immunity during the taunt. And that's like uh, what a lot of experienced Hercules players do. But most experienced Hercules players are in the solo lane, not necessarily the support. Like, yeah, you can, you know, look for those pull pushes, but there's always levels to being able to take a specific god that you're playing and then just bring them into the limelight to, sh to show the whole audience the true capacity. Trickstank, dash, taunt, call us at the target yet again, and unstable vortex lands. Look at Trickstank's build, though. He hasn't itemized into any early magical defense at all. He's not quite worried about Wolfie. Instead, electing for the sovereignty right into the Midgardian mail. Wants to make sure these are warriors, Ice Eyes Baby, and Vote can't hurt him as much. The thing is, as long as Trickstank is the one engaging, he doesn't necessarily have to worry about magical defense if he can just time his sprint and shell to disengage. The whole idea of the Athena is you look for the dash taunt, you force the beads, and then have your team be the one to take out their enemy support before you go down first. Trickstank does go in with the taunt again onto vote this time. Who very calmly holds onto his beads. Kalos gets pushed back in as the Fear No Evil comes out. Up into the sky is Arkle. He's looking for the snipes but can't find the target. Wolfie, final judgment, doesn't hit home either. And now Deathwalker's on the back end side up against five, forced to retreat. Team Rival did grab that tier one tower, but Trix isn't done yet. Goes back for the taunt doesn't quite land as Deathwalker uses the ult. That's the way you use an ultimate to get CC immunity. If Deathwalker gets taunted there, I don't think he necessarily dies, but he's going to take at least half, if not more, of his health pool. But the rest of Dignitas, they want a little bit more after losing their tier one mid tower. They got a lot of health bars low from Rival, and they're going for the pyro. And they're shredding it very quickly. It's already done. Team Rival never had a chance to come in and contest that objective totally. So yes, Rival grabbed that tier one tower in mid, but Dignitas got the Pyromancer. Remember, they also got the Gold Fury earlier on, and they're still ahead a little bit in kills, two to one. There have not been a lot of them. Dignitas has done a good job responding so far to Rival's aggression. Rival has been very confident to make that tier one tower siege happen, considering there was still every ultimate from Dignitas on the book. A straight up five on five man fight, you know, with a Hun Bats, right? on the left side of the map coming from the flank. No one from Rival really panicked. It was a uh, vote that just kind of backed on out, used his Petrify at the perfect timing to be able to immune a little bit of the CC immunity and being able to at least force a premature Arkel ultimate. And then it forced Dignitas in a weird little waffling situation where they had to give up the tower and then look for something else. Tier one tower in left now being looked at here totally after that last fight. Trick Tank's gonna force away Vote, and this is the response from Dave to get a tower of their own. Speaking of Vote, he does have a lead over Arkle of about a, lev about a level or so. Similarly, we see Kiwa Fred on the flip side with a lead over Ice Ice, and Zeros with a lead over Wolfie. So there are some places where Rival have the lead. They have the lead in the Hunter position in the solo lane, and maybe they're trying to play to that by forcing that fight in mid. The biggest lead is definitely in the mid because a level 20 mage that hits at first, your burst damage is just going to be exponentially higher. However, playing the Giannis, it's not always guaranteed you're going for the damage through space and time. More than likely, you're just positioning it so your teammates can follow up, can chase down the opposition, or to disengage. But Wolfie, on the, hand, on the other hand, is going to be able to look for the pure damage. That last fight, a little lackluster ultimate. Would want to see more out of him. He tried to hit variety. Don't think he even connected. And yeah. that just allowed Dignitas more freedom to go for any objective, not having to worry about a potential steal from the final judgment. That ultimate not being quite on the mark did kind of change that last fight. He's working towards the Obsidian Shard, but to be fair, there's actually not a ton of magical defense that he really has to worry about. The main one is Bulwark on Variety, and hopefully he's not trying that hard to blow up Variety, but we'll see if that ends up being the target for them as Gold Fury's back on the map. It looks like at least Deathwalker is near the Gold Fury. There's no Oracles up right now either, so this is more about vision control and a positional advantage than anything else. 
as they do get control of the wards. Last time, Dignitas caught Rival slipping by being able to solo the Gold Fury long enough to have Trix Tank juggle the aggro, but Rival are not sleeping on it this time. They're down about 3,000 gold. They don't want to be down any further. Trix Tank goes in for the taunt. Once again, grab that Magi's Cloak off Ice Ice, baby. And then head right on back. That's exactly what Trick Tank's going to be doing all game. Going in with the ton and getting beads, getting mad guys close, getting cooldowns. Happy to try and find an opportunity to put someone in a bad spot. So you can go back in one more time and set up for zeros or Arkle or the Cubo Fred damage. Zeros, taking a little bit of poke, but they're A-OK -okay with that. Dignitas wanting to force Rival to take this Gold Fury bait because that through space and time is so easy to confirm along these alleyways, these little corridors where you're funneling away or into that through space and time just gets exponentially better. It feels like Rival are the ones trying to like start this fight. Is that who should be trying to force this fight right about this moment now, Tully? Do it they want this more? It seems that Rival are baiting Cat or Trick Tank to try to dash Taunt, but the way Trick Tank is now doing it is he's no longer dashing. He's just going to walk up to you, Taunt. Deathwalker just took 50% of his health pool without any ultimates invested. Dignitas now confident enough to start this second goal here of the game. You can say hello to that Soul Reaver prod from Zeros, I believe. Not much magic defense for Deathwalker right now, aside from the height of the urchin, so he's certainly going to be swinging. Goal fear has been pulled. Deathwalker comes back in, gets chunked again. Has to be careful, but Ice Ice on the back end. Cobra's Kiss doesn't land, but he is able to get the ultimate down. And Arkle wants to go aggressive, continuing to chase away the jungler. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, Deathwalker's a little bit low. Looking for the shots as Arkle. Can't quite find them and comes to rejoin. And nothing being able to be done. Vote is going to be a Aggressed on fatal strike out of Variety claims the first life for Dignitas. Variety finds that kill and now it's time to re-engage. Team Rival with only four members, Deathwalker low, have got to start falling back. Dignitas still have Arkel. They can still pull this gold fear if they choose and they want to use the portals to go aggressive. Zero's in trouble, but Variety goes directly to the back line. He's looking for Wolfie, who's low on mana. Ice Ice is low too and Arkel has the shots. Ice Ice, we'll see you later. Arkel was able to win his one-on-one. -on -one. Variety was able to zone two members away from Rival, preventing the safety for Ice Ice Baby, and the engagement from Ice Ice was just a little bit too long and hesitated. He didn't really get in there as soon as the action happened. By the time that he got in, Arkel was like, oh, okay, well, there's no one really else on me, so I guess I'll just take this one-on-one -on -one fight. Having a one-level lead, Ice Ice Baby really couldn't do anything to the ROM. He was getting out dps very heavily. And I like this from Team Dignitas. They have a chance now for the collapse on a Deathwalker. Fear no evil to push him back into the team. And Zero's there with the Unstable Vortex. Clap for the kill. They didn't want Gold Fury. They want Fire Giant. They're going to have Cubo Fred and Trix take on Zone Duty. No Fear No Evil to help out with this fight. But it's only Wolfie and Collis here to defend. Cubo Fred goes in. Overhand smash. Forces Wolfie back. But they've dropped the objective. They want the fight instead. They're going to chase down Callus. The Astral Arrows are going to slow them down. They're oh, going Wolfie. on to Wolfie because he has no defensive relics. And with that final judgment, for Rival, Team Dignitas is going to be very confident going for this official Fire Giant. This Boy, is th not a bait. This is when Dignitas looks so good, isn't it? When they're making these on-the-fly calls and adjustments as a unit, and everyone's following the call so cleanly. That adjustment over to Wolfie, and they could eyesight him with the portal. That's, it was so beautiful to go over and grab that kill. Now they can come back 5v3. No big main hold to worry about. This Fire Giant should be Dignitas's if they do everything correct. No Deathwalker for 5. No Wolfie for 25. Still not deterred, however, as Ice Ice Baby's on the backhand side. He has the Mad Guy's Cloak. He blinks in. He's trying to get it in. Dignitas, secure it. Not able to take it away in time. And now Arkel's going up to look for the snipes. Lands too. Waiting on the third. Doesn't even need it. Cubo Fred comes up with the auto attack. And Ice Ice Baby has to go back to base. Now Trix Tank is frontlining for the team. Collis has to retreat. Vote on the left-hand side. All alone. But they're going to go for the support instead. Taunt doesn't land. But fear no evils here. Collis falls as well. Eight kills now for Dignitas in total as they take down the tier two. Callus died so quickly that the fatal strike from Variety <laughs> wasn't even impactful. Just kind of hitting a ghost at that point. The shadow of where Callus used to stand right side. Phoenix now being aggressed without minions. So it's taken a little bit longer than Dignitas would like, but it's only vote well, Death to Walker's, defend. He's coming in on the back side. He did have the knockup, but it's too late. Phoenix already down, and Kivo Fred already has the kill. Deathwalker wants to at least try and take down Trick Tank, but he has the taunt into the portal, and Arkel's there with the auto attacks, doing a ton of damage on the raw. 4 0 and 4 a part of 8 of the 10 kills. The Hunter continues to bring the damage. Still looking for more by snatching away the speed, but this is the Dignitas that we need. No, oh, yeah. coming from the online phase, looking so dominant in the summer's performance. Really wanting to, you know, kind of shake off that spring rust 
at that uh, finals lands. And they just play so well as a team totally. I mean, I can't talk about it enough. In these team fights, they know which targets that they want. They know what setup is necessary for them to play around it. They know how much to commit. They use the Hero Fred's ultimate onto Deathwalker early on before they pull Fire Giant. And I might think that that's a little bit too much of an overcommitment. But instead, they just make sure they cleanly kill him, force Rival to fight without one of their biggest presences. And now look where they are. They're up 10 to 1. Rival's composition is just a little bit too fancy for their own good. Sure. It's not the basic bread and butter Athena dash taunt. Athena walk up to you and taunt. Have Cubo Fred follow up. You know, you can easily engage slash disengage with the Zero Yana's portals. Whereas Rival, they're relying on some fancy shenanigans. Callus has not been landing the pull pushes outside, what, burning beads from Markel around the level 2, level 3 laning phase. Since then, he's been very quiet. He's been being bullied for the most part. Every time he enters the jungle, I says Baby hasn't been able to really make a play elsewhere outside of the first blood on some variety. Where has he been since then? And Deathwalker is just a casual victim as he's sitting at 0-3 and 1. Call is taunted back in and gets almost nearly deleted. He's just barely alive. Fear no evil is committed from Kivo Fred along with the fatal strike. Final judgment doesn't land, but Ice Ice Baby ends up falling either way. Kivo Fred happy to do that one. Now the tier 2 tower in mid is in a little bit of trouble. Team Rival have to fall back. Only four members strong. Arco using his Aegis just to prevent that damage. And without the ultimate from Wolfie, how do they defend the middle Phoenix? Going in his Dig and Toss taunt, taunt onto Wolfie forcing the beats. Finally, Trickstank gets pulled, but there's no follow-up push. That was, I mean, it did nothing, right? Essentially, Trickstank kind of just walked right back out. Now five members here. They can continue to push into this Phoenix. They only need one more wave, and don't forget, there's a fire minion wave in right already. Variety goes in, gets stunned through space Votes. and time. Clips through and hits everyone. Vote already low. Deathwalker gets the knockup, but Kubo Fred is unpeeled and undeterred. He takes down the Hunter on the back end. Mid Phoenix still being seized. Collis walks in and catches the hands. He's got Got a leap, but he can't. The portal locks him in. Cubo Fred jumps, and they have Defender of Olympus taunted right back into the damage. Callus just can't get much done. Zero sets it up, and Cubo Fred knocks it down onto Vote, and Callus gets stunned during his dash after the middle. Phoenix, it was a two for one trade. Dignitas able to get away cleanly with another speed buff invade, barely whiffing that one. That stun needed to connect onto Zeros. However, he still had beads. Pretty sure he would have gotten out of that one. I like when you try different things, but this time it just didn't work totally. No, um, not that's, at all. that's all there is to it. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. That doesn't mean that they're they're wrong to give it a try. It just means this time it has not worked out. Now, this game not over yet, but I think we're definitely seeing some of the limitations of this Hercules support. So this pause happens at 2851 at the 23 minute mark. Dignitas are up two to one. Now, <laughs> 13 to two, not even six minutes after the fact. They're able to just blow the door wide open with that second Gold Fury scuffle where they were able to blow up Callus get that second Gold Fury, and then transition it to this Fire Giant where they were constantly dancing around with Rival, getting people in and out of the action, forcing out some ultimates, getting Wolfie when his uh, defensive relics were not available to him, allow Dignitas to get the 25-minute Fire Giant and look for these two Phoenixes. Yep. They didn't even wait for the minions <laughs> on the right side of the map, which was very important timing with how Rival were about to respond to defend it. They just went right up and took it right away, and I love that from Dignitas. That fight that they won, the big fight that team fight they won was really on the gold fury and they decided yep. based on the timing of the map that they didn't need it the fire giants up we killed two people let's go do it and then they even killed death walker before they really commit it was so patient so clean from dignitas the, the play that we saw from here in this game so far talking like the game is over is definitely still here titan's still standing Rival still got a shot. They're making it look like Rival are, you know, not the Spring Masters land winners <laughs> whatsoever. Now, a little bit to Ding Tuss's credit, like, yes, Rival's composition is not their true identity, and we might not see it again for game number two, but Ding Tuss have been able to handle it by leaving Arco alone to farm at the beginning of the game, yes. and that's using your composition strength to its fullest. The, uh, the ROM is in you know isolated farming fashion is what you're really trying to gather we saw both of those hunters actually trying to get some solo farm but arkel was the one to strike the first goal if you know, around that 16 minute mark where rival didn't even anticipate that and this this Giannis has been a problem too for them not just with its damage because he is doing tons of damage but the portals have been so strong for Dignitas. they've been yeah. weaving in and out of them using them perfectly to wrap around the back ends I love the way they used it to collapse on Wolfie underneath the tier 2 tower they've been playing around it really well and the thing is it's like yeah they had the potential rival to take away the Giannis for themselves sure. but if they take the Giannis instead of the Thoth now instead of worrying about the Athena 
Giannis. They have to worry about the Athena Thoth, which does more <laughs> burst damage in a quicker amount of time. Yes, you don't have to worry about the portals and the increased movement speed from the threshold, but there's just, you know, pick your poison. Which one is the lesser of two evils? It's hard to decide if this in, the, in that situation, isn't it? Especially when, as you said, that Athena is already there and Kallus has been playing, or not Kallus, rather, but Trix has been playing it so well for them. To be fair, not a whole lot you gotta do. You do want to make sure that you're taunting it, but he's doing it all really well for him. We saw the early rotation that helped set up that initial 2 one for them where they defend Relipus over to solo lane. Yeah. That was done through Trick's Tank in a large part. They also see him going in, forcing those Magi cloaks and finding the pulls. He's getting it done. He's able to just make it happen onto Kallus yeah. that didn't have a lot of protections or health in the early game as Dignitas is now ready to go back into the action with a commanding 15,000 gold lead. Not even 30 minutes in the game yet. And Tolly, you correctly pointed out that this happened in, a, in the blink of an eye, didn't it? Like, almost overnight, it feels like. They just suddenly were back in control as, as we we're moving back into the game here. Team Dignitas going to be looking to try and close this one out. They've got that pathway through on the right-hand side and the middle. There's only the Tier 2 tower left in duo and the Phoenix left on the left-hand side. And this should be a very quick siege on the left side. Fire Giant is actually due to respawn in less than 40 seconds, so maybe it'll be delayed slightly as Arkle goes back to base after that wave. He needs to sell the Hunter's Blessing and look for that sixth item, considering he already has the Poison Star and the Wind Demon. It's got to be a crit item, probably Deathbringer. Nah, I would not be surprised if it is Deathbringer, and it certainly is. Arkle already 5-0 oh, and 5, already up at the near the top of the player damage charts, at least above most of Team Rival. Aside from Wolfie, who's still finding plenty of damage, he's up at the top amongst everybody leading in the player damage, but it's just not enough at this point. I mean, who's the relevant target that he's been trying to put that on? He can't find Oracle, he can't find Zeros. The thing is, the front frontliners for Rival, they need to find some anti-crit and deter some of that extra damage. No spectral armor whatsoever. Callus already, he he's basically out of this team fight. He is, he's just not tanky enough. Level 16, it's been tough. And Cubo Fred drops the Fear No Evil and drops Vote through space and time comes through. But Arkle's the one with the snipe. Someone put a scope on that guy because he just can't miss. Wolfie falls as well. Variety finds the damage necessary. Ice Ice Baby gets jumped on and slowed. Drops the last breath but gets executed. Executed by Variety, Cubo Fred does eventually end up falling, but the double execute, triple kill for Variety, a deicide, and Team Rival are down. Very great performance from Dignitas, closing this game out, 31 minutes in, 18 to 3 with a clean deicide, only losing Cubo Fred, and they'll take that trade every single day of the week. Was that Dignitas that paused? Because that pause worked. Whatever was discussed <laughs> for Dignitas. I don't know who it was. I don't know. <laughs> Well played. They caught Rival slipping again. Callus, man, he just couldn't do much in these team fights. Yes. The build necessarily wasn't hard enough, really, or just enough protection slash health. He was too far behind from the earlier stages of the game to handle the damage from Zero Giannis. And that's the part that's a little bit confusing to me because if you play the double warrior comp, right, where you got the warrior support, you'd think you want to play aggressive early, but Rival kind of did a lot of hurry up and wait and, and didn't really play to that composition. When it got to this point, there's not much better than an Athena, you know? You know what sure. I mean? It, her, her taunts are so strong in these late game fights, Hercules can't keep up. And the thing is, I'm pr just pretty sure that Kallus is not used to playing the Hercules sure. support compared to others. There's a very few supports that can pilot it at a high level. Frezzy comes to mind back in Season 3 from the old Obey roster. Oh, yeah. He's the one that really sees the highlights out of it. And because he doesn't use his ultimate to get CC immunity, because he doesn't time his mitigate wounds fast enough or anticipation of the Giannis damage, he gets bullied every time. Well, who was your MVP there in that game? It's kind of hard to find one person from that Dean House roster because they did everything yeah. so well. But that's the task I bestow upon you, Chad. Let us know who you think it was, and we'll let you know what the desk thought about that game. Oh, will you? I think I'll let you know what the desk thought about that game. You're going to let the desk know about the game? Why would I tell the desk? Why wouldn't I tell the viewers? Well, here's what I thought about the game. I thought Dean House came out on top. You would be correct. Way to go out on a limb there. Look, that was impressive from Team Dignitas. And it was just the ability, in my mind, to use that Athena nicely and, and just consistently reset team fights. I mean, how many times were Dignitas pulling an objective, you know, Pyromancer, Fire Giant, and then it would be Athena, Dash Taunt, get one kill. All right, let's reset. Maybe, maybe we'll need Tricks to alt back in. Now we can do that again. We can go for Fire Giant, or we can get another pick and just utilize that. The Athena Taunt plus the mobility yeah. From the Giannis ultimate was just too much for Rival to handle. Yeah, for me, it was all about Cubo Fred on, on the hunt bat stuff. Fear and Weevil just repeatedly being used as a team fight disruptor. You know, I, and and 
I, I really like Herc's support and just did not see any of the positives about this pick whatsoever. It brings a tremendous amount of appeal and a CC immune ult for when you're getting screwed by Athena. And I didn't really see either of those in employment. So uh, I like the pick, but the human element. The uh, the the highlight moment for Herc support there was level two when Kalas got our kills beats. Yeah. Everything after that kind of went downhill. And listen, I'm usually very critical when uh, fam famously once upon a time I asked why we didn't see more Hercules in like season one. And the answer was he's too hard to confirm abilities right i was like all right so he's too difficult listen that's a big part of it he's mad difficult and we yeah. just didn't see the the connection here unfortunately for the support player but it all connected in the solo lane variety the most valuable player here for team dignitas like i said i i was looking at the monkey you were looking at the support variety though is what the fans are looking at variety just continues to have a really really solid season five and after all the talk uh, last year during World, it's like, oh, who's the best solo lane in the world? It's got to be either Benji or Deathwalker. Variety kind of got forgotten about for a while, and I don't think that you could forget about him anymore with the way that he's played during Season 5. It has been incredibly impressive, and it's not just that, you know, he's going to play these beat -em up uh, Achilles and whatever, that kind of stuff. It's his flexibility in that solo lane. He has become so much more flexible there. I mean, he's used to playing sort of weird stuff. He's the one who was coming out with the Thanatos solo lane and the Rat solo lane and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff and doing very well with it. But it's the it's the Athena solos. You know, it's that completely different play style. The Aphrodite. These are the sorts of things. I know that he played them in the past, but that was a long, long time ago. A variety continues to impress with the way that he can play anything and play it better than anyone who's playing against. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, solo lane players out there that I call the Swiss Army knife of the squad, and those are usually not the the players in the spotlight, right? Sure. Deathwalker is not that guy. He does Deathwalker things, and and same to be said about Benji. He does Benji things. He tanks the whole team. And variety is is that guy that is the Swiss Army knife, but is also up on top. He's the quintessential, I think, blue collar worker of the solo lane. And Ask him to do something, and he'll go ahead and do it. And he's what a lot of these uh, these variable solo laners should kind of look up to. Team.